We, we were never really convinced that uh, at the end of the day uh, the ECB could really uh, uh, move too fast and too aggressive on, on that front. I think that uh, you know it's totally coherent uh, in t to some extent what they are doing. I think they need to see a more concrete sign of, of, of recovery and, and inflation coming back before they can really uh, uh, taper in a more aggressive way and uh, in that sense uh, um, not unexpected. You and Andrea bank on, on, on a healthy volatility 2018. Is that what kicks the IB up the curve? Uh, we are not banking. We are open for it, but we are prepared to manage any kind of uh, market conditions. Uh, uh, and uh, it's very important for us uh, not to go into wishful thinking about the environment. Uh, it's, it's still a very uh, challenging uh, environment, uh, although, of course, we see uh, um, uh, GDP growth forecast is, is set to be revised up again. Uh, but the geopolitical and, and uh, situation and the macroeconomic situation is still very complex. We are also entering into a very challenging quarter in terms of seasonality. So I, I think that uh, we stay focused on, on executing on our current strategy, and that's very important for us. My favorite subject, and one, one, one that you get bored talking to me about, but you've already, you brought it up in America, so I'll bring it back to you. We're almost there. Actually, we are there. Your capital buffers are 13.7%. That's up. That's nice. Do we get a buyback from UBS in 2018? Look, it's premature to talk about our our uh, capital return policy, but uh, you know I, I mentioned it that uh, in the past that we we reached the capital levels that are needed to fulfill uh, regulatory requirements uh, that are you know for 2020. So capital buildup is done, and so we we, we will uh, uh, we are looking to continue to implement our progressive dividend um, uh, policy on our base uh, on our cash dividend, and. Uh, and uh, eventually uh, complemented it with uh, capital returns through share buyback. But it's too early to, 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 to talk about that. I look forward to the quarterly results when, when we get it. We are the world's most expensive investment bank with the cheapest asset gatherer. You priced, priced to tangible book value stands at 1.4. How much are you underpriced then by? When? Well, when? It's difficult. I mean, I mean, it's the market, and I think it's going to be a matter of time till those things are correct. So I think that we, we, uh, at the end of the day, uh, one thing is clear to me is that it's not that we we want to be considered just a pure asset gatherer, but we are skewed toward more of an asset gatherer. And at the end of the day, uh, I think that uh, once the capital uh, requirements for uh, us and the industry are clarified. I think the market will uh, will uh, will recognize our cash generation capabilities and our capital uh, returns uh, capacity. You sent out a, a survey to the employees. I understand in terms of choosing a location uh, in a post-Brexit world, we're top the list. <laughs> well, first of all, the, the survey is not uh, closed, and, and, and we're not going to really um, uh, disclose these uh, results because it's an element that we are uh, considering clearly. On, on, uh, are you leaning more towards Frankfurt, Sergio? Uh, well, first of all, I think there is a big difference between where we domicile uh, our our legal entity, which is currently in Frankfurt, and uh, uh, and, and 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 you know, through uh, within Europe, you can branch out. Uh, um, uh, into into different other locations and, and, and operate out of a branch within the euro uh, the eurozone. So um, that's that's where it goes down to. So I mean, asking uh, our colleagues is a very important element in our uh, decision making process. But uh, it's one of the elements. It can be uh, no element uh, is is crucial and and uh, nothing is is decided. But uh, we are very close to to make decisions, of course. Finally, an, an area where I know you talked about before, it's uh, the Bank of Italy, um, the appointment of Visco. We, we understand it's, it's, it's imminent uh, for a second term. Would that be good for, for the Bank of Italy if Visco is reappointed? Look, I'm not entering into this kind of uh, debates. I think it's up for uh, politicians to make those kind of decisions. I think that, uh, of course, uh, uh, stability is always good, and, uh, but that's not my task to make a comment on that.